Hi and welcome to part 2 of this series in building a line follower robot with the BBC Microbit. In the last video I demonstrated how to actually read sensors with the BBC Microbit. Uh, in uh, this video I will be doing uh, the uh, second part which is adding motors, uh, motor control to the BBC Microbit using an L293D which is basically a motor driver chip. Uh, it really reduces the amount of effort required and uh, the motive here will be to actually use an algorithm a simple software program using touch develop to make the um, make a complete wheel robot that can navigate a simple line uh, painted on a piece of chart paper so let's begin all right to control the motors uh, we have a number of options you can uh, use some transistors you can make your own uh, each bridges and stuff like that uh, instead the simplest option would be uh, in my view to use uh, an IC uh, an integrated circuit design specifically dedicated to driving motors and that is the L293D L293D <coughs> now uh, it has some uh, flyback diodes uh, inbuilt into the IC itself so it does a lot of the stuff uh, just out of the box it uh, this is the basic pin configuration wherein you have you can attach basically two dc motors or one stepper motor four pole uh, we won't go into the stepper motor part we'll be driving we are interested in actually driving dc motors uh, with the dc motors uh, we have uh, the option to connect two of them uh, there are four pins for ground and usually we add a lot of solder to this so that they can be used uh, as a sort of a, a heat sinking mechanism because there is no heat sink on top it has the cap you can check out the data sheet and uh, look at the specs and everything um, quite generally speaking the uh, motors are connected to the out one out two uh, out three and out four pins on the chip so uh, you just wire them up and that goes so how do you control the uh, direction of the motors well inside each of these so on the left and the right side there are two h bridges so what an h bridge basically looks like is four transistors right and we have this connected to say uh, v motor right and these two connected to ground your motors are basically connected in between right forgive the bad diagrams um, what you do basically is when you want this motor to turn in say one direction and you want the current to flow in this direction you switch on transistor 1 and transistor 2 so what that does is it allows the current to flow from uh, within transistor T1 or, or TA and then go to TB and then you know rotate and if you wanted to rotate in the other direction that means you have to redirect the current in that direction so you switch these off and you turn these two transistors on and uh, the motor rotates in the other direction so how do you determine um, you know which direction uh, it's supposed to turn on so so this is in one more or less and uh, I think if I'm doing this wrong please do let me know and this is say in two so what the, if you turn in one on and you turn this one off so these two transistors are switched on and these tra transistors are switched on so that makes your uh, motor rotate in one direction and vice versa the problem is uh, you are not supposed to turn on to give this one uh, turn on all four of these transistors if you do that so transistors a b c and d will turn on which will basically act like a short circuit and you'll end up destroying the transistor uh, destroying the uh, device itself so uh, that you have to take care of in either software or there is another way to do it uh, and i'll explain that uh, later on but then in order to control the speed of these motors what we typically do is we give a pulse width modulation signal uh, pulse width modulation signal which is basically high speed switching on on off on off on off on off on off on off so that it's it it acts like a um, um you know it averages the uh, current that out your motor basically can't respond to uh, immediate uh, voltages so it 
it will act like as if you are supplying a lesser amount of voltage so the speed will be less so on so there's a long list of uh, you know theoretical articles behind this won't go into all of that so just to summarize using these enable pins you can uh, control the speed of this motor so on and again this you can control the speed of this motor and uh, to control the direction if you give both of them zero zero both of the motors will be switched off regardless of what you supply here if you switch one here and supply zero here it the motors will rotate in one direction and with the if you uh, have no pwm signals going in motors won't rotate as with the pwm signals increasing or if you supply a one here it will rotate at the full uh, speed uh, depending upon uh, what you're doing so v motor is connected here and this is the logic supply because this is going to be how much you can you know so this should not go uh, above vcc this should always be less than vcc cool okay uh, so how do i take care of uh, 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 you know uh, make sure that both of these are not turned on simultaneously well i normally have a transistor circuit right uh, which i use so this is our collector vcc and i give in one signal here and in two signal from here so basically this acts like an a not gate or an inverter uh, sorry and that allows me to use one pin uh, to select the direction of the motors so if i supply a one it will there will be a one here and a zero here so that means the motor will rotate in one direction if i supply a zero here automatically it's the transistor action is going to call uh, cause it to have a one here which is going to make the motor rotate in the other direction and in the speed and if i want to switch it off i would do that using the enable pin so i've already made a small pcb i've added a big capacitor for the uh, v motor and to the ground because um, uh, you know noisy supplies and stuff like that uh, these are the two transistors i am using a two and double two double two okay i'll make i'll put the circuit uh, somewhere along the blog post or in somewhere in the video and uh, the connections I have already routed from the motor to here this is my ground pad the next part is going to be me trying to connect this to the BBC micro bit and in addition to that I need two DC motors let me see my junk box if I can find one all right I have connected two DC motors and I've already got a hold on hold on hold on I've already got a the power supply set to 3.3 uh, volts and it's powered on. You can see it's consuming about 0 0.1 amps. All right, and uh, back to the bench. So you can see these are the two motors uh, connecting the power supplies. I'm using both VCC and uh, the V motor as 3.3 volts generated by the power supply. I have actually grounded everything: uh, the direction, the speed, the direction and speed pin I uh, actually left the direction pin alone here because I'm using a pull up so I'm assuming it's going up automatically so uh, that in this case I'm just pulling up uh, putting the direction pin to ground so let's take a look at when I uh, pluck out the speed pin okay there we go you can see this motor is actually spinning if I ground it it stops right yeah yep so and because there is a pull up so it really doesn't matter if i connect it so if i attach a pulse width modulation signal i can actually control the speed of this particular uh, motor for the other one if again if i pluck out the speed bin you can see that the motor switch is on grounding the speed pin on the other one switch it off so that means my l293d circuit actually works quite well i can now use some kind of a chassis okay now there's a lot of options for the chassis okay um this is something that i use for a reply again it has a simple 
uh, DC motor, the similar kind of DC motors I'm using. This is another L29 uh, 3D circuit board. I use this circuit a lot for uh, driving motors. It's now, uh, since my motor driver is working, now I need to interface the micro bit with the motor driver and correspondingly the DC motor. So what I want to do is, let me just go back and connect this. Uh, so that means the cross should basically indicate that no movements of both of the motors should be on when there is sense, uh, something on sensor one. So only one of the motors should move and the other one should be stopped. Correspondingly, if I put it on the left, uh, if I see a white card on the left sensor, you should be able to switch on off one of the motors and switch on just one of the motors. And if there is a white line, uh, sorry, a white piece of paper on both of these, uh, then both of the motors should turn on, which basically indicates that um, my motor by my robot is basically going in a straight line. So straight line, turn left, straight line, turn right. You know, uh, it should be able to do that thing pretty nicely. So let's jump into the code and uh, do the rest of the stuff. All right, I have already modified my code. Uh, I have already tested it out. So let's, let me just walk you through it. So uh, in the previous script, we just had some displays. Uh, the point was that we could actually indicate whether we want to go forward, uh, take a left, take a right or just stop. I'm not doing any backwards on any of that stuff right now. I'm not even doing a uh, turning on its own axis kind of thing right now. What I am doing is I am using the uh, speed uh, pin for, for the uh, L293D which was the enable pin and I am just switching it on and off the direction is going to be more or less constant it's going to be forward and uh, right now the BBZ micro bit won't, uh, won't be able to turn the motor in this particular experiment in this particular video we'll do that later on now um, what's going on is um, I've actually taken a look at the pin diagram uh, Google searched it uh, and uh, it seems like uh, I'm using pin 2 for one of the motor driving and because the the next pin uh, to it is P12 so I'm using P12 to drive the other motor. Um, I can't use these other uh, uh, pins like P3 or P5 or P4 because uh, they are actually being used to drive these LEDs on these uh, uh, this matrix display. Okay, so we do not want to use these unless you do not want to use the matrix display altogether which i am in fact using to display the direction so i'm just going to use p12 it's right next to it and uh, i'm going to connect it through with that um then we have the code itself let me just walk you through it uh in addition to the plot for the forward movement i am doing p2 and p12 to be set as a digital one which will mean uh, it will move forward in the maximum speed possible when i need to turn it turn left uh, I switch off the left motor and keep the right motor on so basically what happens is there are uh, the two wheels so for if the left uh, wheel switches off and the right wheel uh, keeps on moving it will basically turn left it will just curve around right and the con the opposite is true when I want to turn it uh, rightwards and when there is uh, you know either it's fallen off the edge of the world or something like that uh, or the you know sensors are not getting anything or they have both stepped on a black line so I just wanted to stop and in that case I've switched off both of the motors uh, I've already uh, compiled the code just step, step, step compile one of the things that I missed last Last time about the touch develop interface at microbit.co.uk was that you really uh, can't sign in unless you're a teacher uh, in the UK who has actually registered whose school has actually registered with the BBC uh, and I am obviously in, in India <laughs> and uh, so what I what in order for you to uh, save your script what you can do is click the save button and it will save it as uh, our JSZ file the same goes for any kind of script so you just save these keep on saving these uh, and the next time you want to actually reuse one just click the import button choose the file and you know uh, that it'll just pop back in so that kind of is the uh, quick and dirty with the code uh, for the line follower so let's take a look at how the motors are working all right welcome back to messy bench uh, so what i've already done here is i've sorted an extra connector for the power supply and uh, ground uh, so i am supplying the vcc and ground which is for reference for the l293d using these two wires and i've obviously used pin 2 and pin 12 
uh, to uh, connect the motor speed pins uh, in addition to that i am using pin 0 uh, p0 and p1 to read from the sensors obviously and uh, i've got the l293 hooked up i've checked the connections for the motors and the motor driver the motor driver is actually being fed the v motor a 5 volt supply from my bench power supply and uh, okay let's i've already compiled the code and uploaded the code it's just a matter of dragging and dropping so that kind of works out so there we go it boots up and motors on so nothing in front of the sensor so more, both of the motors are switched off i hope you can actually see these motors right all right so if there is a sensor on one of these i need to turn left so this motor is running amok there we go so that means the left motor works now the right motor works out and if i want to go forward there we go both of them so that's pretty cool um it's pretty simple making both of these motors there we go so obviously i'm going to have to do something about uh, the speed of the motors depending upon the chassis more or less the motors that we use are geared motors and they don't ha uh, even if you power them with five volts they don't really run at you know, the full uh, speed this is without any load and it's actually running uh, completely and totally nuts so yeah um motor driving is successful now i need to attach some wheels to this thing should i add some wheels to this thing mm, let's see uh, all right this is my masterpiece uh line follower track uh, that we are gonna try and navigate um so oh, oh. there we go so yeah it, it, it has issues with hold on hold on with navigating around curvatures curvatures problem is because uh, the track is not very standardized the width of the sensors the distance between the sensors is actually a lot smaller than what uh, distance uh, is between uh, the thickness of the line basically so it kind of uh, does it sometimes it has issues um, if you can slow the whole thing down obviously its accuracy will increase because it's um, sampling a lot more as compared to uh, what it does when it's at a higher speed um, here you can see it's uh, because of the battery uh, being drained <laughs> it's able to uh, do the cur uh, curves at a much uh, uh, slower pace and uh, it does it successfully and the battery is almost dead and it's going to die and so yeah uh, that is the bbc come on come on come on so that is the bbc micro bit based line follower robot and uh, yeah it works simple quick and dirty really really dirty All right, so this was the BBC Microbit simple line follower. Uh, the parts you can get online at any store. I'm not, uh, I haven't been sponsored uh, for any of these parts except for the BBC Microbit by element14.com. Uh, beyond that, you can get a ready-made uh, L3D uh, driver from the internet, from eBay or whatever cheap source. The diodes and everything, the circuit I explained the last time in the last video, you can, uh, if you, uh, I'll link it below in the comments in, the, in youtube if you want to actually go into the details of uh, how initially i started off with the project the connecting wires the jumpers and stuff like that that's also available from uh, anywhere basically so uh, uh yep the line for this was the basic line follower robot we have not touched on the direction pins uh, so in the next video what i intend to do is ta -da! okay so this is something that i bought off of amazon um, it's a spider it's it's a remote control spider robot which you can uh, it's very cheap uh, it kind of uh, is fun to actually play with it has again two motors inside Aha. so the two motors allow it to move forward move backward turn left and then move in that particular direction so what in this case what i will be interested in, in is to actually add the control uh, of this particular spider robot and i can actually have a small uh, arm which will have the sensor suspended on uh, in front of it so it can actually follow the a line which is in front of it uh, not as a wheel robot but as a spider chuck, 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 and so on and so forth you know support me by liking subscribing this video and uh, if you want me to do the line follower robot using the spider robot 
leave me a comment and i'll do that thanks for watching